Hello and welcome. I'm Hi C, and this is Toku Rev, your introduction to Tokusatsu movie and TV shows to help you decide what you want to spend your time watching. We are returning to the black and white ecstasy with Zebra Man 2 Attack on Zebra City. So a few months back, I did a review on the Takashi Miike film, Zebra Man. While I ultimately didn't think the movie totally worked, I really loved its throwback charm from 1970s and 1980s tokusatsu TV shows. Zebra Man was a departure from what I was used to seeing from Miike. So much that when I went into the movie for the first time, I was expecting something a little more stylized than what I ended up getting. By that point, I had already seen the trailer for Zebra Man 2, and it looked to be exactly what I was after. But be careful what you wish for. Zebra Man 2 starts off shortly after the end of Zebra Man. Shinichi is now struggling to live a normal life, surrounded by reporters and news cameras asking him to say some of his iconic lines. However, he seems to have lost the ability to transform into Zebra Man, and somehow feels more lost now than he did in the last movie. While being surrounded, he spots Shinpei in a crowd, but as it turns out, he's just watching old footage from a news report, and he's actually been kidnapped by a mad scientist. It's here we learn that due to the media attention, Shinichi has lost both his family and his job. And the student he cared so much about. Strapped into a spinning device, the scientist activates his machine as we are swept away into the future in the year 2025 and introduce the white-haired Shinichi. Welcome to Zebra City, where the looming Zebra Tower sits center city, initiating Zebra Time. Zebra Time spans 5 minutes every day at 5 o'clock a.m. and p.m., binding the city in a zebra print force field and giving rights to the zebra police to storm the streets and execute any would-be criminals. This works if you think about it as a mini purge that can only be operated by the police, striping away evil so that the world can flourish, giving those who control the zebra police the right to be absolved of any wrongdoing during Zebra Time. This includes rape and experimental medicine, but statistically, this has turned Zebra City into the safest city in the world. <laughs> The Zebra Police target Shinichi as a would-be criminal and give chase. As he's hunted down, we are introduced to the idol of Zebra Time and our antagonist, the Zebra Queen. Her father is in charge of Zebra City, giving her immaturity a lot of power. When the police fire and shoot Shinichi down, this somehow seems to affect the Zebra Queen, leaving Shinichi for dead as Zebra Time's five-minute window comes to a close, leaving his dying body to be found by Ichiba, a would-be military leader who takes him back to his base, known as the White House. It's here we meet a young surgeon who turns out to be Shinpei Asano, now referred to only as Asano, who recognizes Shinichi but is told he is dead, only to find out that Shinichi is now pretty physically resilient and hard to kill. But unfortunately, Shinichi has no memory of his past and learns how terrible Zebra City can be, exploring Asano's White House hospital, helping all those who have been brutalized by the Zebra police. <laughs> During recovery, Shinichi is teamed up with Ichiban, who has a crush on Yui, the Zebra Queen. When watching one of her videos, Shinichi becomes weaker and weaker until the video is turned off. With nothing else to do, Ichiban pops in one of his old DVDs from when he was an actor. He played the role of Zebra Man, describing the history of Zebra Man to the amnesiac Shinichi. Showing the Zebra Man episodes, we are treated to new footage of a new fake show. This is a much more modern take on tokusatsu than in Zebra Man 1. While the original movie copied 1970s tokusatsu, Trope, Zebra Man 2's footage is much more reminiscent of the 90s. This brings flashbacks to his kidnapping and starts the road to him remembering his identity. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
Meanwhile, we get to see more footage of Yui behind the scene. We learn more about the Zebra Queen, her father being in charge of Zebra City and the Zebra Police. Between music video shoots and trying on fashions by Lion Maru G, Yui makes time to murder a fellow idol for having a higher ranked hit single than she does. We also get to meet Nimi, an all-purpose chauffeur, assassin, and confidant for the Zebra Queen. Nimi is probably the coolest character in Zebra Man 2. He's a strong stoic character with a samurai spirit and dedication to protecting his queen. Zebra Zebra Queen learns of the alien invasion from Zebra Man and wants to recreate it with a young girl who hosts the alien inside of her. Of course, the young girl is at the White House with Shinichi and he vows to protect her from the Zebra Queen and her Zebra Police. And honestly, that's all you really need to know before I spoil the remainder of the plot for you. But putting it short, we learn of Shinichi's lost years and the connection between him and the Zebra Queen and the duality of striping evil. So let's talk about the production of Zebra Man 2, Attack on Zebra City. I wanted a more stylized version of Zebra Man, and I got it here. Everything feels edgy to the point of comedy. Gone is the warm, charming, slice-of-life visuals that we got in the original, replaced with high-contrast camera shots and a lot of latex miniskirts. This definitely feels like the over-the-top visuals I've come to expect out of Takashi Miyake. The outfits, prosthetics, and effects are really impressive this time around. The alien flubbers still look like flubbers, but instead of being an ominous evil, it's more of a side attraction, so it still doesn't bother me very much. The last movie was a love letter to Tokusatsu, while this one almost feels like it's trying to mimic an early 2000s American superhero film. Taking the action scenes on their own merit really works for me. Well choreographed, it's easy to lose yourself in the superhero fights. With a mixture of real sets and CG reinforcements, the film does a good job of creating an interesting world that serves as a good backdrop. When it comes to the music, I'm honestly a little let down. I love the music in the first film, and admittedly, it wouldn't really work in this film. It has a large score to complement the large action set pieces, and the idle techno J-pop make for an interesting futuristic dystopian touch that works for the film's strengths. But still, when I hear that Sephora, Sephora. played during the new Tokusatsu TV show Cutaways, I can't help but smile a bit and miss the whimsy of the first movie's score. But I admit that the bombastic score of Attack on Zebra City fits, even if it's not that memorable. So how about that recommendation? I honestly have no idea what to say here, I'm completely split. I admitted that the first Zebra Man was a flawed movie that couldn't support its own weight, but it also said something important to me about living your passions, becoming vulnerable, and being willing to put your creativity out there. Zebra Man 2 doesn't say anything like that, and I admit it's a little unfair for me to expect it to. As a sequel, I think it's a miserable failure in every way, from purpose to tone, but letting it stand on its own feet is a different story. I don't know that it fully works as a film either, but it's definitely an experience. There is a story here about duality and that life, both figuratively and literally, is not black and white, but the gray areas in between. It's fun, and it's the crazy ride that I wrongfully assumed the first film was going to take me on. It's a fun movie that barely relates to the original, and if you just take the world of Zebra City at face value, it's a fun, twisted superhero film. There is a lot of adult humor in Zebra City, and it plays itself tongue-in-cheek. I'm still a little concerned about this condom joke. And I don't know if it's as funny as it is weird. It may be a cultural difference, but I struggle to imagine how some of these ideas even started. It's a ride completely unattached to reality. And as long as I didn't take it too seriously, I had a lot of fun. So if you think you're into this quirky take on superheroes, go on and check out Zebra Man 2 Attack on Zebra City. But if you're looking for something with a more traditional story and structure, it might be better to skip this one. Thank you for watching Tokurev, your introduction to tokusatsu movie and TV shows. I appreciate everybody's patience as this video was pushed back a few weeks because I kind of had a house fire. But everything's okay and everybody's okay and now we're back to making videos full time. 
And I hope to have a couple more out this month just to make up for a little bit of that lost traction. Thank you to everybody for the support and well wishes through a couple of really hard weeks. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, follow on Twitter, all that, you know, usual stuff that's at the end of these videos. And I hope you guys come back for more Toku introductions.